right, so one of the first things we'll talk about is basically looking at the different types of tooling, whether we're talking about a Frankfurt style brick, a snail lock version, or simply just the actual diameter of the head based off the actual series number of the actual type itself. With the 2000 series of 26, 27, 2800 style series, we are able to run a large diameter head, but before the series, whether it's Destiny 1016 or now the newer 3000 series, we are unable to actually longer run the large diameter head, and then we have to simply either look at a different tooling manufacturer or simply break down to a smaller snail lot, uh, single style brush head to accommodate the actual distance between the center line of the spindle and the actual ball screw itself. And if you're uncertain, if we can just simply load the tool into the spindle and manually raise to see if there's any interference. So the intention of an actual diamond wire is to potentially aggressively basically remove soft material and leave hard material behind. So as we start to progress, based off your tooling manufacturer, we can start at different grits based off of your actual desired texture of your end result. The silicon carbide, as we progress through our actual stages of our leathering process, then we can start to introduce basically the silicon carbide brush, which in the intention is to bring back or bring back the life of the color, the natural color of your actual material. The tools that we have in front of us today, we basically have a large 13 diameter head that supports the Frankfurt style brick connection, which has these brushes basically with the taper lock, are now locked into place, but also with this tool we have the option to actually support different size snail locks in the same connection as well. On the other side, we have the other six inch uh, small diameter snail lock version for, for smaller pieces and also inside diameters to stay with inside the known area for pocketing. All right, the next thing we can look at is building our actual tool link from the tool library on the machine. We can simply just grab a tape measure for the time being. What we're going to end up doing is actually create a longer tool length than what the tool fit measures. That way we can properly set the correct depth or pressure against the actual springs on these tools. So we'll grab just a basic tape measure. There again, I'm just going to simply put it in my tool. I'm going to reference off the gauge line of the actual cone. So on this one, I'm going to basically say it's seven and a half inches, but there again, I'm going to purposely raise it up. And we can just simply say nine inches for the time being. All right, so we're going to go to our, in our main menu here, setup, tool library. And basically build a tool and a tool number associated outside of our tool rack. Edit tool, tool name. For setting up our program in AlphaCam, we first need to define a tool. We can select the machine tab up above and then follow to the right to where it says define tool. We are simply going to select a flat end tool. Our tool number and offset numbers are going to be greater than our tool rack position so that way we can select a manual tool change. My tool length is going to be a generic tool length based off of simulation purposes and my diameter is going to match my tool diameter. We're going to select flood, we are going to select fix down below, 
my spindle speeds are going to be an average number based off of material type and brushes and along with my feed rate and down feed are going to match. Once we hit OK, we can simply select our tool name and hit save. As you can see, we've created our part size based off the dimensions we have, placed our pods, and also set our material layer. Next, we can create our tool direction, but first we're gonna offset an additional line so that way we can change the direction of our tool for the outside pass. We'll now go up to our tool direction tab. We are gonna be dealing or working with closed geometries. So we're gonna select our inside. One will be clockwise and the additional one will be counterclockwise and select close. Now with our tool direction now set, we can go up to our select tool to grab our tool out of our tool library. For this example, we are now gonna be using the pocketing command. In the pocketing command, we will select our vertical for our side options and also for the geometries, we can keep it on selected. In the general tab, we can now switch over to our linear motion, along with keeping the full pass around islands selected. Levels and cuts can be based off of material type and thickness, along with material top and final depth being the same. Machining data, with the stock to be left, I want to slightly overhang my tool just a little bit, but not the full width of my actual brush. So I'm going to select a negative value of 1.2 and my width of cut to create more or additional passes, I'm gonna select a smaller value to help open the grains up moving in both directions. With my tool data, I'm verifying that my information is correct. As I select OK on the bottom, I can now select one of my geometry lines. For additional passes to hide brush lines or marks, we can reselect our pocketing command. Our types, generals, levels, and cuts should all be the same information, but we are going to verify our width of cut along with changing our tool direction so now we have vertical tool paths. We can now select our additional geometry line and verify that our tool is now additionally going the opposite direction. With all of our tool paths applied, we can now modify our lead in and lead out. So that way we can help reduce the torque load and horsepower draw on the spindle. So we can select our lead in and lead out. We're gonna select our manual option and with the linear type, we can now select the box with the sloping lead in and now select your tool path to be modified. As you can see, we have the additional tool diameter. So I'm just gonna slightly pull away from my material and select. For the second option, I can also do the same. We can select close. And as you can see, we have the sloping lead in to reduce our torque and horsepower drop. Then run your simulation and send your G-code like you normally would. Load your program into the controller, project your laser for your pods, and set your material like a normal operation. And like always, verify and make sure the area is clear and safe to run the program.
Now we can reselect cycle start. Once I recognize my material height that matches my program, now we can stop the machine. Back to our main menu, set up, tool library, edit tool, zero our machine. Just that it makes a noise right now. At this point, our tool is touching the top of our surface. So I'm going to capture that tool link by selecting lower and just typing in the actual value, not the inverted value. Now to get the correct pressure that I desire for my springs, I can now select lower again and now just simply type in my desired pressure onto my springs. Save and close. Hit OK. Main menu, G code process. Now we can reselect cycle start. my spindle starts, I'm going to actually increase my RPM. Once your tool is engaged, then we can run back to our desired RPM. So we've dried our part off here to do a little bit of inspection just to verify that not only is our tool working properly, but we're trying to determine basically what desired finish we have. The thing to keep in mind at this point is we're going to basically move on to the next grit. But the next grit is still going to remove more material and still give it a deeper texture. Typically in the next two steps it will progress, slightly get a little bit more deep, and then after that we're actually start bringing some of the natural color back in with some of the silk and carbide brushes. All right guys, so this is more or less the desired finish that I'm after. Um, so I'm going to kind of give up on the more aggressive diamond wire, so I'm going to eventually switch over to the silicon carbide, so that way I can actually start to kind of bring some light back out of this material, or bring the natural color back. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.